All right, this is first grade, module one, lesson 16. And in this lesson, we are continuing to count on. So that's our addition technique. Uh, but this time we have an unknown part. And essentially we're gonna be answering a whole bunch of questions in that form. Uh, six plus what equals nine in, in that kind of a form. And what we could do is we could look at, uh, you've seen this maybe from a previous video that I did, and these are all different kinds of addition problems. This is an add to, and this is put together. And in this add to, you can have the result unknown, the change unknown, or the start unknown. And down here, you can have put together, which also suggests addition, right? Uh, where you have the total unknown, or the add end unknown, or both are unknown. And the way I'm seeing this is in these lessons, we're going to be largely looking at this right here, um, where it's the add to, and it's the change that's unknown. So if I were to be a betting man, it's these kinds of problems that we're really kind of focusing on in this lesson. And the homework is really kind of cool because it flows so beautifully. Three questions. The first is very concrete. Students at home can take out objects. They can take out their Legos, their dolls, their trucks, whatever, their Star Wars guys. And they can, they can do this themselves and create this problem and model it and then find the missing answer. And then we move to numbers where... They could be using their five group cards, or if you want to differentiate, some students might still need to take out their Lego pieces. Other students might not need even the five group cards. They could do the entire thing in their head or on their fingers. And then lastly, we're using a count on where it's really suggesting, because of this thought bubble here, that we want to use our hands or, or do it in our head. So I love the flow from the concrete, to the kind of transitional, maybe pictorial, because we're counting the dots, and then to the abstract. It's a beautiful flow. Let's take a look at each one of these problems um, by itself. So here we're going to be using Legos or cars or just drawing, and we're going to draw. So it says draw some more right here in order to solve this problem. Well, we see that we have four dog, uh, four dogs, because my dog is barking, and I said dog. Oh, I'm going to have to hurt her. Okay, so anyway, we have four Jeeps, right? And we need to draw more Jeeps so that we finally get a total of six. So I'm going to draw one right here. Oh, boy, I draw a horrible Jeep. And here's another one. And let's see, let's go back and count. So we have four. So I'm going to say four, five, six. Woohoo! So I've done it. So parents and teachers, this is what we're looking for, is we're not looking for uh, total auto automaticity at this point yet, although this is a standard, and this is a fluency standard. So uh, we will want our students to be becoming um, automatic with this real soon. And so our missing value is a two. And this is one way to do it. Let's move on to the next problem kind of going to a transitional stage where it's not so concrete as to have cards, I mean uh, cars or Lego pieces, but now we're using the five group cards. So the idea would be we have a card that says six plus we have another card and then we have a card that equals eight, much like what I just, what's right here. But the idea would be what's going to go here and we would use our fingers, and we'd say six, and then seven, eight. And as I'm using my fingers, and I'm counting on, and oh, seven, eight. I'm holding up two fingers, which means I would need, like, the two-dot card right there. So what's going to be on one side is the two dots, and on the other side of that card is going to be the numeral two. All right, so we now know that our missing value here is a two. And then go into the most abstract. So uh, we're going to try and do this in our head, although counting on our fingers is absolutely allowed too. So we're going to use our fist and we're going to say seven. And then we're going to go eight, nine, ten. And I'm putting up a finger each time I count. And I see that I've got three fingers holding up. I'm holding up three fingers when I get to ten. So that means seven plus three is our ten. 
parents and teachers, lots of ways we can differentiate this. One, uh, for the people who are struggling with this skill right now, continue letting them hold on to Legos or cars or those dot, those five group cards. Those are okay too. Uh, although we are trying to move our students to being able to do it in their head and with their fingers, uh, but we're going to keep differentiating until they're ready. On the other end of the differentiation, you might want to take, for example, this problem and change it to 17 plus what equals 20. This no longer is really part of the first grade standards because we're going higher, um, but that's okay. And at this point, your students, if you need to differentiate on that high end, uh, go ahead and give them problems like this. Another option would have been like 27 plus what? equals 30 because at this point students are able to count to 100 so count on up to the next decade that's a reasonable way to differentiate and that wraps up first grade module 1 lesson 16 uh, using the count on method for an unknown part